Gentlemen, a lot of people think um, in the close season we, we close down here at uh, Headingley, but I know it's been quite busy for you, Martin, in particular. Yeah, we have a couple of weeks off. Managed to get a holiday at the end of the season. Um, but as you say, once we're back, you know, the fixture list and um, hotels, you know, second eleven fixtures, grounds, um, all that kind of takes place in November. And, um, you know, it's about planning them pre-season, hopefully pre-season tour and, uh, you know, the practice sessions um, post-Christmas. Uh, the lads are back in training from mid-November as well, so they're in four times a week uh, from mid-November doing physical training. So, you know, there's plenty, uh, plenty to keep us occupied, uh, as you say, at this time of year. And the man next year, every time you turn the television on, all we, do, all we see is his face on there. Yeah, well, I've, uh, I've tried to avoid watching the verdict, you know, because I'm fed up of seeing his teeth. You know, all he's done is smile for the last three weeks, isn't it? Um, so, you know, obviously we gave him a lot of stick last summer, so we're uh, battening down the hatches now for when he's, uh, when he's crowing about their success this winter. Biggest understatement, Jason, but you must have loved the winter so far. Um, it's been good. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you always enjoy um, seeing some good cricket. Um, but, yeah, just jumping on, on Martin's uh, comments about uh, the off-season, um, you know, we've got some new members of our support staff who are, are just getting to know the players a little bit. Uh, Ian Fisher, SHC, um, and Kunwa Banzel, our new physio. So these guys are getting to know the players. They're probably spending more time with the players than the actual uh, coaching staff um, you know, as such, just to, uh, because it is a physical phase before Christmas. So it's really good to see the lads you know, in fine form and, and getting themselves nice and fit. Um, you know, and then in January, we'll start getting into some of the, uh, the cricket skills. So it's been, a, it's been a good little period. Have the players responded well to, to the new guys? I certainly have. And just all the feedback we've been getting as coaches has been very positive and uh, I think just mixing it up, you know, a bit different to what it's been in the past. Uh, and I think the lads have enjoyed that uh, fresh approach and, you know, doing, you know, a lot of the same things, but probably done slightly differently. It just gives, it just freshens it up a little bit. I mean, the lads have said it's been hard. Um, the work's been hard, but they've really enjoyed it. Um, we've introduced yoga this year, um, you know, as a group for the first time. Lads have done it individually. Uh, from time to time, but we've got the group doing yoga at the moment. So, um, you know, again, I don't think people realised how hard yoga can be. Um, but what, what are the benefits of yoga? Um, just really for, for the players' uh, mobility and movement, uh, so that, that, you know, in the field in particular, that their movement is, is better and quicker. Um, um, you know, they're more flexible. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll see, see dividends from that, you know, come, uh, come the season. And, and I can tell you it's very relaxing. I, I, I turned up and did one of the sessions and uh, I must admit at the end they have this, the lady um, get you to lie back and relax and there's some nice soft music on and um, once I woke up um, <laughs> all the boys were laughing and giving the coach a bit of stick. So that no, was very good and, and you know, it's obvious that the lads are really enjoying it. So will those type of initiatives continue throughout the season or is this just part of the, the pre-season uh, training? No, we... Um you know, we're hoping we can carry it on throughout the season. Um, you know, this is obviously the start, but um, as and when is, you know, convenient, we can carry that on. It's, it's not something you can just, um, you know, do for a couple of months and then you've, you know, that's it. You've got to, you've got to keep doing it. So hopefully we can keep, uh, keep that part of our programme. Well, let's look at the fixtures and 2014 in particular. There's a, a reasonably new structure, you know, with the, the T20 competition starting in May, running through to... July and then we've got the Pro 50 or the, the new Royal London the One Day Cup at the 50 over competition starting in, in July as well. Plus you've got four day cricket amongst that. How are you going to cope with all the demands on the team playing four day cricket and then the next day playing T20 and then returning to four day cricket as the season gets underway, you know, April, May time? Well, again, it's going to, it's going to take organisation. You know, we, we're not going to be in a, a situation whereby we can be resting our our main bowlers as, as much uh, early in the season. You know, we use YB40 to rest, you know, Ryan, Pato, people like that. Um, but as T20 is the first competition this year, you know, they're, they're going to be potentially involved in both four day and T20 cricket. So it's about, again, managing the squad well, hoping we don't get injuries. So that's going to be key. Um, but again, you know, just managing the workloads. I mean, you know, Dizzy will come on to that, I'm sure. It, 
in a, in a second, but um, it's about managing the squad and, and, and um, making sure they recover well from games. Um, you know, that's a big part of, of modern day cricket is, is being fit at the start of the season, but maintaining fitness and, you know, recovering well and looking after themselves. So that you know, each each day that they they turn out for a match at, at peak readiness, if you like. Um, but it will be a challenge. You know, this year will this coming year will be a challenge uh, because you know games. Initially, it's quite you know, first three I think championship games are without T20. But once we get into T20, uh, May and June are particularly busy busy months. So. Um, It'll you know it'll take careful management, won't it? It, it? it certainly will, and you know with this new format, you know, generally on a Friday night you'll have a high octane 2020 match. Then the, obviously the the next day to recover and prepare, and that's what people got to remember. You know we do need to prepare for the the day one of the county championship game that starts on the Sundays. So it is going to be careful management. Um, are our you know frontline seamers going to play? Every one, every T20 game leading into a championship game, we don't know. It, it, it seriously is going to depend on how they're feeling. Um, you know, but people underestimate how much T20 takes out of all players, not just bowlers. So we do need to be mindful of that, and we do need to make the best decisions we can, taking into account what the bowlers have been doing, uh, how they're pulling up after games. Um, you know, speaking to our physiotherapist and our strength and conditioning uh, coach. To make sure that you know the lads are in the in the best condition, and you know you know we've got a full season to worry about, um, and we've got to make sure that uh, all our lads are are in the best shape and, and ready to go. And every club will have the same predicament, no doubt. But do you feel the squad is strong enough to cope with those demands? Yeah, I think they are. I mean, again, you know, it's a, a little bit unknown of with the England situation of who's going to be available. So that, that always complicates things as to exactly who's going to be available at any one time. Um, but, I, you know, I'd like to think we've got all bases covered. Um, you know, what we, what we um, hopefully don't have to contend with is too many injuries. And touch wood, we've, you know, we've been very good at that over the last few years. Um, you know, our medical staff and, and as Dizzy said, strength and conditioning coaches have been outstanding in regards to um, you know avoiding as many injuries as possible, so we'll continue with that. You know that's a main priority for us is is injury prevention, um, because you know it's a it's a key aspect of the season is having as many players as possible available at all times. Even though it's going to be a challenge, it seems to be an exciting. When you look at the fixture list, the schedule looks really exciting for English cricket. Well, I've got no doubt it's it's the right way forward. Um, you know, I think the going back to 50 over cricket, you know, I think that, you know, some people would still like to see 40 over cricket and I can completely understand that. But I think it's a really good opportunity. Um, it, it's essentially in a, in a block. Um, you know, I think that we'll be able to manage our players quite well in that period. Um, but it does, as we've just spoken about, it does present some challenges. T20 going to championship cricket and vice versa. So uh, I'm sure we'll... Uh, We'll come up with the right formula, and um, you know, but it's got to be in the best interests of our players and of and of Yorkshire County Cricket Club. And what's your thoughts on Sunday starts for the championship? Look, I think the fixture list in England's been a problem from ever since I can remember starting playing and being involved in first class cricket. And you know, whatever well, we've got, you know, 18 counties to to keep happy, we're never going to keep everybody happy. Uh, it's impossible to have a perfect fixture list. Um, you know, obviously the, the idea of Friday T20s is to maximise crowds, um, you know, and hopefully that's, that will happen. It should do, you know, I think Friday, you know, seems to be a popular night for T20 cricket and the Sunday starts is geared around T20s being on Fridays. So everybody knows, you know, apart from two, I think, home games for us, is that right? We've got five, haven't we? Five Friday night T20 games, so people know that that's what's happening. Um, you know, and, and I think members were unhappy when they weren't sure what day of the week, what type of cricket was going to be played. So at least we've got a bit more consistency of people knowing when when games are going to be taking place. So you're never going to, you know, you're not going to get a perfect fixture list in England, I'm afraid. Uh, whatever we've got, 18 counties. So you know, everybody's in the same boat. Everybody's going to have periods when it's really busy, uh, at different points during the season. So. You know the challenge is is um, is dealing with that, as as Dizzy said, and you know we 
you know, we, we pride ourselves on trying to plan and prepare as best we possibly can. Dizzy, let's look at the squad. What are the benefits having a, a settled squad going into 2014? Well, having a settled squad, uh, lads know each other, I suppose. If you, if you have all these players coming and going, you know, I suppose at the last minute, you know, it ca can be a little bit unsettling. Lads not quite sure who's going to be in the frame to play in a first team game or play in a second team game. I think when you have a settled squad, there's a bit more clarity. Um, and one thing we don't have this, uh, this winter coming up is uh, a big squad actually in Leeds or training with us here in Leeds. Uh, we get a lot of guys overseas, um, you know, working on their cricket, um, you know, in the Southern Hemisphere. So, uh, which is good, you know, a lot of players want to um, continue their cricket and, and learn how to play in, in different environments. So we, we think that's a real positive. Has that been a, a cricketing decision then to send them away? Picked up to individuals, Frog, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, we, um, Majority of the lads have been here pre-Christmas. It's going to be more after Christmas when uh, when we have, I think, all but eight, um, all but eight players on the staff will be uh, will be abroad probably from February onwards. Um, but you know the the benefit of that is that they're outside on grass, you know, and and, and playing cricket on grass because you know there's only so much you can do indoors, um, you know. So they'll have had a month indoors before they go away. Um, so, you know, any little technical things that we want to work on can be done then and then they can go away and, and put them into practice. So they'll continue their physical training, you know, they'll be given programs to do whilst they're out there. Um, you know, we'll be, we'll be looking for them to work on the, the skills that, we, that we've spoken about before they go actually out in the field in practice. And, you know, the majority of them are in, uh, in Australia. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty decent place to play cricket. Absolutely. Frog, was it, was it a conscious decision to, to retain the current players and not bring anyone in for, for this season? Yeah, it, you know, we, um, you know we're, we're happy with the squad. I mean, Kane Williamson, obviously, is, is going to come as overseas player again. And, and, you know, he was fantastic last year for us. Um, you know, I think uh, he surprised me, actually, how, how good a player he is. Um, you know, he knew he's, he's a good player playing, obviously, test cricket, but... Um, you know, I, I really like the way he bats. Uh, for me, he's kind of, you know, a really good role model for for a batsman. Um, you know, and he's good for us to use with our with our academy and junior players. Is, you know, that's how to set up really, um, and go about your batting. Uh, and he's a good bloke as well. I mean, he fitted so well into the dressing room. It felt as though he'd just been with us all, the you know, forever. <laughs> he'd been here a week, and he just felt part of the furniture um, so as well as being a you know really a good bloke he, he's an excellent cricketer for us and you know the fact that he's available for all but probably a couple of months we, we're not 100% sure at this moment in time when the West Indies tour or the New Zealand tour to the West Indies is um, but the fact he's going to be available for the vast majority of the season is a benefit because as, as Dizzy said it's a little bit unsettling if you're chopping and changing overseas players and people are mm coming and going so um, you know I'm delighted that, that Kane's coming back and um, you know the, the core of the team is, is still here and you know what we've got as well is some exciting young players that you know if there's an opportunity arises for them then you know we, we're going to be happy to, to throw them in and, and we have to you know we have to as I keep saying keep that development wheel turning um, you know because who, who knows it might not be too long before we have all four lads that are in the squad, you know, in Australia at the minute, playing for England at the same time. So that's quite a big hole in your in your staff if you've got four lads playing for England. So we we've, we've got to we've got to um, you know integrate our young players into first team cricket, and um, you know that's that's the development process that we need to keep happening. So you know if there are gaps appear for whatever reason, then you know these these young lads will get opportunities. And how do we change things around? Because no doubt teams are going to start to to get to know how we play, in particular from last year in Championship cricket I'm thinking about now. You know, how do we keep it fresh? How do we change the strategies? Uh, well, the, the strategies are very simple. Um, we look to pitch the ball up when we bowl. Uh, we back that up with uh, good solid fielding. And, you know, we look to, uh, with the bat, we try to get as many part, you know, significant partnerships as we possibly can. So, you know, we certainly don't reinvent the wheel. 
it's all about implementing that and, and making sure you're getting the job done. Um, what we are going to be uh, working on over the, the winter is looking to have scenarios where we, we put players under pressure at training uh, indoors and then you know, when we go on a pre-season trip we'll, we'll start to put some of those things into practice. Um, you know, we, we, a bit of consequence training which we, we think can certainly uh, help our lads develop their games a little bit more and uh, you know, I'm sure every player uh, that's in our squad has their own personal goals built into the team goals and you know, if every player can improve a little bit you know, we're hopeful that you know, the team will improve um, just that little bit more which is, uh, which is what we'd love to see. Winning games isn't that complicated really. You know, we've seen, you know, in the Ashes, you know, so far in Australia winning the first three test matches. You know, to win games, basically, you do the basics well for longer than the opposition. I think, you know, you don't need to complicate it any more than that. And, and you know, the difference between England and Australia at the minute is that Australia are doing the basics a lot better than England are. Um, you know, and it's things like bowling. You know, bowling lines and lengths consistently, creating pressure, not allowing too many bad balls so England can score freely. You know, and, and eventually something gives. You know, that's when they, somebody cracks because they, they're not allowed to express themselves, play with freedom because, you know, they're under pressure all the time. Um, so, you know, I don't see why we need to change that plan um, because it works. Similarly with the bat, you know, you've got to, get the balance between attacking and yet not getting out carelessly you know and again that that's an area where you know Dizzy's talking about the consequence training where we can try and put the players under pressure in practice so that they get that balance right obviously the the idea of batting is to score runs but you can only score runs if you're at the crease so there's no point just being careless and just throwing the bat and being out for 15 20 every time so you've got to be out of bat for a long time particularly in championship cricket you know, and get hundreds. And again, the stats, Australia, seven hundreds. Mm. In three test matches, we've got one yeah. from a guy who's playing his second test match. So again, you know, it's the basics of the game, bat long, bat well, get hundreds, wins your games. So, you know, the, the core of winning games doesn't change. What we've got to be is better at doing the basics for longer and not cracking under pressure. You know, when we are under pressure, can we deal with it? Most of the time we do, um, but if we can do it every time, then we'll start winning championships. Same in, you know, in one day cricket, thinking clearly under pressure. And again, that's what our practice this winter and our pre-season tour is going to be about, is putting the lads under as much pressure in match type situations as possible so that when they're out in the, you know, in the, in the middle during the summer, they can react positively to whatever's thrown up up for them exactly. and that's how you get back. What Martin just said there, react positively. If you are preparing as well as you can and you're putting yourself under pressure as an individual at training and you're getting those basics right and you're drilling those basics, that will give you immense confidence to go out and implement that in the game so that there is no indecision. You get out there, if you've got the bat in hand or the ball in hand, you know, right, I can, just, I can do this skill, I can perform this skill. And I've got the support of everyone. I've got the support of the, my captain. I've got the support of my teammates. I've got the support of the coaching staff. I can just go out and do it because I've prepared for this. So that's what we try and do. And, and you know, we have a bit of a catchphrase, give, it, give yourself the very best chance. And if you can give yourself the best chance to be successful in everything you do in preparation, then you can just go out and play with a bit of freedom.